Search is one of the most useful features you can add to your site, and a good search UX will make your users love your app even more. Take this Gumroad search page for example. If we type in a query and press enter, we'll see the results almost instantly, and the page doesn't need to refresh. If we refresh the page, we don't lose our search. If we narrow down our search by clicking on a different category, the query goes with us and we don't lose the search state. If we add more filters to the search, the results update to reflect them. And even after this, refreshing the page is near instant and the page doesn't lose the search state. This is a good search user experience in my opinion. And in this video, we are going to look into how we can build the same search functionality in Next.js. We'll try to make the app look good. But the focus won't be on the UI aspect of this. We want to know what it takes on the implementation side to set up something like this. Let's get started. Consider this React search component. It has a form with an input box for entering search queries and a button for submitting the form. Our first task is being able to get the value of the input box after a user submits the search form. Let's set up a search text state variable using React use state hook. To capture the search input, we have to capture it when the form is submitted. So let's add a handle submit function. Inside it, let's set the search text value by getting it from event.target.q.value. For now, let's pin the value of the search text state variable on the screen. Since this component uses use state hook and is interactive, we need to explicitly mark it as a client component by adding a use client directive at the top of the file or Next.js will throw an error and refuse to render it. So if you enter the search text and submit the form, the search input will be displayed just as we expected. This is a good start. Let's go ahead and implement the search functionality to make this page a bit useful. For a start, this is the data we want to search. We have an albums.json file with a list of Spotify albums for popular artists. The data includes the IDs of the artists that worked on the album, the album name, ID, link, and image. What we want our search app to do is allow users to search for these albums. First, we want to have a search endpoint that will receive all search queries and return the search results. Root handlers are the perfect feature for that. So let's create one by adding an app search root to JS file in the app folder. We want to be able to send a search request by sending a get request to this root. So we export a get async function. This function automatically gets passed a request property. So we can use it to get the search params object by creating a new URL object from the request.url property. We can then get the search query via search params.ghq. Let's then import the albums.json file. As a start, we'll filter the albums array to return albums whose name include the search query. Let's also make sure to return the data if the search query is not set by giving it a default empty string. We can then return the JSON results by using next response to JSON utility. With that, our search function is done. Let's test it by sending a GET request to the API search root. All albums will be returned if we send the request without providing a query. Let's add a search query to the URL and retry the request. Albums whose names contain the query will be returned. Let's go ahead and integrate this into our search page. First, we need a state variable that will store the search results. Let's call it results. Let's then add a function that hits our search endpoint called search album. We'll use the fetch API for this and append the search query at the end of the URL. We can then convert the return data to JSON and set the result state value to this data. Let's finally call this search albums function inside the submit event listener. Submitting the form will trigger the API call. We now have the search results handy. Let's display them. Let's add a container div to display the search results. We add some classes to make it look a little presentable. You can then loop through the results and return the cards for each of the albums. If you have a keen eye, you may be familiar with the class names that I'm using. They're not random. That's because I'm using the Tailwind CSS framework. I like it because I don't have to think about styling components that I need. I just use the utility classes that they provide. With this complete, let's go to the search page and test our new additions. If you click on the search button without any input, all albums will be displayed. If you narrow down the search with a search query, only albums whose titles contain the query will be returned. That sort of achieves what you are going for, searching without refreshing the page. But you are still far from our goal. If you refresh the page, the search results will be lost and we will have to re-enter the search again. Our next task is preserving the search state across page refreshes. The best way to preserve search state is by storing the query in the URL as a query string. We can do that by first removing the form on submit handler. We want to let the browser automatically append the search string to the current URL. So we add a method get to the form element. Let's go back to the browser and see how this works. If you key in a search query and submit the form, the page will refresh and update with the query string added to the URL. The search query being in the URL makes a lot of things easier for us. We don't have to manually handle the search state and we can do the search on the server 
instead of the client. Next.js automatically passes the values of the query string to the page component in the app folder. This is the page.js file. The values are stored in the search params property, so you can get the search query via search params queue property. You can then pass it over to a search component as a search text prop. In the search component, we no longer need the state variable for the search text, as you are now getting it from the props. So let's remove it. We also don't use this handle submit function anymore. So let's remove it too. We want the search to be performed on the server. So we'll need to change data fetching logic a bit. First, let's move this search albums function to outside of the file. We want it to do the search and return the data. So let's remove the set results function call and just return the JSON. We can also supply the search text as an argument. So what this function does is it receives a search query, perform the search and return the data. The next part is going to be a bit weird and may not make sense at first. We can call this search function directly in our component, just like any other async function. So the value of the results variable now becomes the data returned by awaiting search albums function. Since we can't use await in an async function, we need to make the component async. Since you are no longer using state variables or event listeners, let's remove the use client directive at the top of the file. This makes this component a server component, and so the data will be fetched on the server. We also need to provide a full URL to the fetch function instead of just a path name because the URL scope won't be available on the server. If you visit the page, you can see that the search results are automatically fetched according to the search query. If we perform a search, the search query will be updated as the page refreshes. The results are also persistent across page refreshes. If you load the page with no search query, all albums will be shown by default. Our search app is shaping up nicely. A nice detail I realized is that the search results data is cached, so our search endpoint doesn't get hit every time a search is performed. This is because the fetch API we are using has been extended by Next.js to support automatic caching. With such state preservation done, our next step is making the search feel snappy by refreshing the browser every time a search is done. And we don't want that. We want the search to feel instant and more like an app instead of a web page. To achieve this, we need to move some things around once again. We want to be able to manipulate the browser history on form submit. So we need to change this search component back to a client component. It doesn't mean undoing the progress that we've made so far. We're just going to move the searching logic higher up the component tree to give us an opportunity to capture the form submission data in an event handle. So let's cut the search function out first and then get the results from the probe. We can then make this a client component by re-adding the use client directive in the top of the file. Let's remove the method property from the form element and re-add the onSubmit function that will be handled by our handle submit function. In the handle submit function, we prevent the form from submitting via event or prevent default and then get the form via event or target. Now here is the new functionality that you're going to implement. First, we get the Next.js router via the use router hook. This way you need to be a little more careful. The use router hook from Next router doesn't work in client components. You have to import it from Next navigation for this to work. We can then set the query string to the URL via router.push function where we pass in a string containing the new query string. Router.push changes the browser URL and updates the component without refreshing the page. Exactly what we need. Finally, let's move the search functionality higher up the component tree by adding it to the page.js file. So paste the search function here and get the results inside the component. Remember to make the component a sync because you're using a wait and finally pass in the results prop to the search component. Let's go to the search page in the browser to demo this. So if you search for an album, the search results will be near instant. And all this happens when the URL is updated with the search query. This means that if you refresh the page, the search state will still be preserved. So we are getting the best of both worlds. Now don't let this speed fool you. We're just filtering through a local JSON array to perform a search and there's little latency involved, if any. Let's try to make the search endpoint take a little while to respond by introducing some delay and returning the results. If we try searching for an album, it looks like nothing is happening for some seconds and the screen looks like it's frozen for a while before updating with the search result. This can happen in real life scenarios where your internet may be slow or the API may be overloaded. We need a way to show the user that something is happening through a loading UI. In next 13 app folder, you can add a loading.js file next to your page.js file that will be shown as the data is being fetched. This file exports a React component, just like the page.js file. And for our case, it returns this loading skeleton component that I've created using Tailwind. Let's see how it works on the browser. If we refresh the page, our loading UI will be shown for some time as the data is being fetched and will be replaced with the real data after fetching is done. The loading UI looks quite misplaced. The search box isn't involved in the data fetching, so we should be able to see it as the data is being fetched. So let's remove it from the search component and move it to its own search form component. 
Next.js loads the loading component inside the layout.js file if any of the children are still loading data. It uses React Suspense under the hood to do this. So we need to add the search form component outside of the children, like just before it, and it won't be hidden under the loading UI. If we refresh the page, the loading UI will now be shown just below the search box and will be replaced with the results after the loading is done. Now, the automatic loading indicator has one limitation that is a blocker for the search UI. It only displays while fetching the data on first load. So if you perform a search, the UI won't be shown at all. As far as I know, there's no way to trigger the loading UI after updating the query string in the URL. So we need to find a better way to achieve what we want. The best solution I see is to switch to client-side fetching. We can use the SWR package, which works similar to the fetch API, primarily because you also get data caching out of the box. We use it as a React hook, so we can import it as use SWR. So to use it, we need to turn our page component to a client component first where the use client hook. Let's then replace our search function with a call to the use SWR hook. It accepts the key and fetcher function argument. The key here is automatically passed to the fetcher function and is also used as a cache invalidation value. So if it changes, then the data will be fetched afraid. Let's make it the search URL instead of just the search string so that it's never empty. To do that, let's change the fetch function call in the search albums function to accept a URL prop instead of a search text prop. In the use SWR hook call, we can change the URL key to the API search URL path with the search string. Since this is a client component, we expect the data to be missing on initial render. So we can set up the default results value to an empty array and also the search text to an empty string. If we refresh the page, you'll see the loading UI displayed briefly before the results are shown. Searching will also display the loading UI for a second before showing the new result. This achieves the behavior that we are going for, but it's not quite there yet. A blank screen is shown for a split second before the loading UI is shown. We need to get rid of the Next.js loading UI and use our own loading logic. So let's delete the loading.jsx file and then use the isLoading property of use SWR hook to check if the data is loading and return our loading skeleton there. Now this next part, although time is very important, when I deleted the loading.jsx file, I had to restart the server just to get everything working again, but I had triggered a pretty aggressive bug on Next.js that was hard to point out. It kept trying to re-render the page and the tab was using about 90% of my CPU. Looking back at the code, I realized that I forgot to remove the async keyword from the component. Removing it fixed the issue. Let's move on. So if we refresh the page, the loading UI will display as the data is fetched and get replaced by the data after a successful fetch. Searching also works as expected and the loading UI is shown while searching. For already cached searches, the UI updates instantly. Also refreshing the page maintains the search results. So that should be it. I'm going to end here for this guide. We still have lots of features to cover. So that's why I call this a part one. So please subscribe so that you don't miss any more of this video. See you in the next video.